Hello again. I wanted to go over um, how to get started reading tarot cards. Um, it seems to be that that's where the most confusion is. Uh, what decks to get and how to read and how to interpret the cards and things like this. There's so much out there. It's like the forest for the trees makes it kind of difficult. So as far as a tarot deck to get, I would suggest starting out, which most people agree with, is the Rider weight. I would also get the Marseille, Tarot Marseille. And I'll start with the Tarot Marseille. The first reason I, the reason I, I like that deck, for one thing, I read professionally with it. I have for many years. It works fine. It's probably the first tarot deck to be associated with the occult and to be associated with doing readings. So it's the original. And um, that's why I think it's, it's good to start, it's good to have a base, a knowledge of the basics. And I think that that, that deck, the Tarot Marseille, is where it's all at with that. And you can read professionally with it if you want to. There's a lot of other great decks out there today. So, whatever blows your hair back, you know, it's whatever you like. The tarot, the, the Rider Waite deck is like a standard lately, though, of um, most artists that create their own tarot decks use the Rider deck as a guide on what their images are going to look like and it's illustrations on all the cards versus the Tarot Marseille is uh, a lot of pip cards in there things like this you don't really see a lot of um, you don't see much the majors are just you know it's a classical deck and um, if you know this, if, but if, the reason I like the, the Tarot Marseille, because if you know the Tarot Marseille, if you could read with that deck, every other deck you're going to understand it. Where if you start with a different deck, and you, and you go to another deck, you might not see the connection between the two. You start with the Marseille deck, you could you could use any deck, and and um, it's not as far as I'm concerned. The way I teach, the deck isn't really important. You know, whatever deck you want to use is fine. Um, but um, I do feel that if you learn the Marseille, you can pick up any deck and and read well with it. And the second deck with, with for that it would be the 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 Rider weight is. It's the same type of thing because most most people, most artists, like I say, use this deck as a guide to make their deck. Not the Marseille. And um, so those two decks are good surefire decks to learn. And you won't be struggling with another deck later on. You pick up the Aquarian deck later or Zagini deck. Any deck you get is going to be fine. You know, you'll see it right away. And I think it's. I. I, I think it's. Um. I wouldn't worry too much about. Uh, about symbolism with the decks either. You know, you you can really get involved with a lot of the symbolism. Like in the full card on the on the writer deck. He has a um, he has a red feather in his cap, and that's supposed to symbolize passion. He holds a white lily in his left hand, and that's supposed to symbolize innocence. And he has um, a number of pinwheels on his cloak. Each one is a seven-spoked or an eight-spoked pinwheel. That's supposed to symbolize something too, supposedly. I don't really think it does. If I, I, I've read all my life 
and knowing that about the symbolism, which I have for many years, I could tell you I've never once used it. So is it important? I don't think so. To me it isn't anyway. Might be somebody else might. It's it's it's, it's fun to, to read about symbolism in the cards um, and pick them apart. If you want to do that, fine. Is it going to help you be a reader? I don't really think it does. But I'm just sharing my thoughts here with that. Maybe some, maybe some of my co-workers, that, which are good friends of mine, they might disagree with me. Um, and um, so you, might, so you might find people that think it is important. And if that's the case, I'm not, uh, I'm not arguing about it. I'm just saying my opinion. I've never used it. And I think you're better off focusing more on the readings you're doing instead of looking at the cards under a microscope. And one's deck being better than another, as far as the way I'm, as far as I'm concerned, they all work. And um, do I have a personal preference? When somebody calls me for a reading, whatever deck is lying close to me is the deck I use. I have decks all over the place, so it depends on where I'm at. And they all work fine. If, I'm, if I know I'm planning on a, an event and I'm going out the door, I will usually take my Marseille decks, is what I take with me, my Mar Tarot Marseille. It's just a preference. If it's not, it's not important though. I mean, if I walk out the door and I say, oh, I took my writer deck with me instead, it's not going to ruin my night. I don't, it's not going to, it, it doesn't make any difference. I'm focused more on the quality of the readings I'm doing, not the deck I took to do those readings. And I think it's, I think it's a good idea to try to focus more on your readings than, um, memorizing symbolism and um, one deck versus another uh, I, to me it just it doesn't really seem to work so that's my opinion so if you want to get started with tarot cards I would say um, get the right away but I also feel that it's, it would be a real wise choice to also buy the tarot Marseille any version of the Tarot Marseille. There's a lot of different publishers with it. and um, But just to have that because that's where it all started. And um, if you could read the Tarot Marseille, you could read any deck. The only deck that I would say, the only thing I would try to stay away from is I had, as a matter of fact, somebody just commented to me about that. They bought a deck of tarot cards and it has a key word on the bottom of the card. What the card means. I don't, I don't like that because it's telling you what the card means instead of allowing you to come up with your own ideas. It's telling you specifically what that card means. And it might be hard to fit it into your reading. I think you'll have better readings if you just have a keyword memorized for each card instead of one that's printed on the card that you're allowed to drift that that meaning into other things that'll be important in your reading. They, um, if you do have a deck where there's a keyword printed on the on the card, I would say just ignore that. That's my suggestion. If you really, if you like the deck. The Thoth deck is, is one that does that. And um, well, the Thoth deck is one that does that. There's a, there's a few others out there too. But um, and that's a very deep deck. It's another thing I'd like to mention here. If you if you go with the Alistair Crowley Thoth. Is Toth or Thoth? I'm not too sure how to pronounce it. I've heard both. Tomato, tomato. If you do go with that deck, you're probably going to be limited to 
just the teachings of Crowley's thinking with that deck. Where if you go with the Marseille or the Rider deck, pretty much any book you pick up on tarot cards, you're going to be able to identify what they're talking about and understand it. Crowley's deck was a little di bit different. And um, again, that's my opinion. I know people who use Crowley's deck and it works fine for them, so this is just my feelings. Nothing wrong with the deck. But I think it's a little harder to read with that deck than it would be the Ryder deck or the Marseille. And it'd be hard if you if you bought that deck and you picked up a, a book on the tarot by somebody else. My books. Um, they're not using that deck. It might be hard to make an adjustment to what they're saying in the book to your deck. So focus more on your readings than on the symbolism of the cards or the, um, the decks you're using. I think it's, it's good to, um, to, look in the, to look into that. The symbolism is fun to read about. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I just take it as that, just fun. I don't really um, use that in a reading. It doesn't make any difference to me. So have fun. Get, get the deck that you like. More than likely, if you're just starting out with tarot, what it seems like most people are doing today, or for a long time, is you'll end up buying, over the course of a month or two, you'll end up buying a half a dozen tarot decks and maybe half a dozen books on it. And then you, you, have all, you get scattered, all these different ways of going about doing things. And who's right, who's wrong? Um, they're all right. And um, <laughs> you know, so it's just a matter of what you like. And you might get something out of this person that source, you might get something out of another source, you might get something out of this deck, you might get something out of another deck. Pretty soon it'll all start to come together and you'll um, you'll make those decisions on what what to how to read. You'll find your way to read and you'll find what works for you. So focus more on your readings and um, don't worry about what deck you got. They'll all work fine. So I can, I can read just as good with the Ryder deck as I can with the Zangini. And, uh, you know, it doesn't make any difference. So, let's focus more on your readings. I'd also, I, I'd also say that it's a, it's a good idea to um, try to stick with one spread. Find a spread that covers, be helpful for any, any question asked of it. And um, try a couple different ones, we'll see which ones you like. And um, when you find a spread that works for any question asked, just use that spread. And, and you're going to find it, be, it helps a lot because you stay, there's a consistency there. And it really helps to help you improve your readings because you're using the same spread every time. So as you improve, you'll see what you did different here, how you see in this position more clear, maybe giving it, refining the purpose of position number four compared to what you were using earlier or position number nine or whatever, um, you start to fine tune it and um, it, what works for you. So using one spread I think is very helpful and um, so I teach that to my students too. And if you know, if you know me, you know I use the Celtic cross. That's what I like to use the most. The way I use it, I, I talk about it in other YouTubes. So works out good for me. And if you use it, I think it'll work out good for you. My books, I, I use, um, I teach with the with the writer deck, only because I think it's a good standard. But I don't care if you want to use gummy bear tarot, you know, or 
character or the cat people or something like that. Um, the tarot cards. So the Five of Swords is the Five of Swords. Eight of Wands is the Eight of Wands. Hangman's the Hangman. <laughs> but I, w I would stay away from novelty decks, so I shouldn't say that. But it doesn't really make any difference. As long as you like the deck, it's a good deck for you. And um, But focus on your readings. So find a, a spread you like. If you like my Celtic Cross, use it. I think it's a good spread. But whatever spread you like, just stay consistent with that and learn to improve your readings because of it. And um, you might change a deck here and there. That's nothing wrong with that. It'll work. So I hope this helps uh, people starting out and um, have fun with it. Keep throwing cards. We'll talk soon. Bye.